Was that WDV playing earlier this morning? Yeah. Yeah? Do you listen to it every morning? Yes, indeed. Yeah. Well, what's it like hearing that station still on the air? A miracle. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was born right at the beginning of the Depression, 1931. And my dad was in it from the beginning. He was a pretty good poet, and he wrote poetry, sort of country poetry. And uh, he was a featured attraction. Great, it's a great station. And still is, it's a news station. Did you think it would, you said it was a miracle. Did you think it would <laughs> well, still be on air all these years later? radio land these days, that's a miracle, I think. Yeah. But it's very fixed on what it wants to get done. It doesn't step outside of that. So it's always been a news station. And we're only eight miles from the state capital, Montpelier. It's got a, quite a history. I heard a story, and you can tell me if this is true or not, but at a young age, you accidentally took the radio station off the air. Several times. Several times. <laughs> what was your dad's reaction, if you remember, to you taking it off the air? Probably I got a ass whipping. <laughs> Frequently. <laughs> but I had to know what all that stuff was. What was it like growing up in that area of of radio being around it all the time it was world war ii and it's a little town in vermont so the western union office was in the radio station and the telephone office was on the second floor so there was the news mecca of waterbury vermont and when the telegrams came about people that were lost or dead, my father had to deliver them. And uh, that was quite a time. It really brought the war home seriously. And it, it did what it was supposed to do. It was relevant to the community in which it, uh, and the surrounding communities. It's never lost that feeling to it growing up here as a youngster in vermont you know you're you're working in and around the radio station going to school were you, were you a good student no no <laughs> there were too many things to do so i was not the best student but uh, it all worked out where did you apply your time the most various activities and various things we used to cover the country fairs Boy, I live for the autumn. And there would be six or seven fairs, and they'd go there and sit up for three or four days and review the winners in all the dairy and sheep and chickens and rabbits. And uh, the big thing in the 30s, end of the 40s, and through the, four, the, the war period were the harness races. The Kentucky Derby meant nothing, but there was another race that meant everything. We had two winners driven by a, a Waterbury man, and that was news. That was important stuff to people that live in Vermont. That, that should make up what a radio market is, along with the news that Vermont continued to create out of Montpelier and out of Washington. We always sent pretty good people down to Washington, not all the time, but most of the time. And that was a part of it. And it has never lost that part of the station. But it's a worry because anybody with a popular format of music is a competitor and usually a strong one. Mm -hmm. And uh, so far, we're there, here, now. <laughs>